In this video, we're going to go over all of the derivative equations that are given to you on the AP Physics C equation sheet. The first that we're going to start with is the power rule. The power rule is given to you on the equation sheet like this. The derivative of some function with respect to x, if that function is x to the n, where n is some power, equals n times x to the n minus 1. Okay, so this is the derivative that we're all familiar with. It's the trick of calculus. If you had a function, let's say it was, oh, I don't know, how about f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Then the derivative of that function would look like this. You would write df dx you could write df of x if you want, um, but df over dx equals, and then you take this 2, multiply it by 3. Um, so that's the, that's called the, the constant rule, um, whatever. So 2 times 3 is 6, and then you reduce the exponent by 1. So instead of x squared, now it's just x. Same thing with the second term. You have 2x, and that becomes 2. Um, and then the minus 1 just becomes nothing. It goes away. So this is the power rule. If you ever forget the power rule, it is on your AP Physics C equation sheet, which is really nice. Okay, let's do the next one. The chain rule. So the chain rule is kind of weird, um, and it has some very, very grand applications in calculus. But on the AP Physics test, it's really only used for a couple of things. Um, it's written like this. DF of dx, so the derivative of some function with respect to x is equal to the derivative of some function with respect to u times the derivative of some function, I'm sorry, of that function u with respect to x. The idea being that these du's can cancel out and give you df over dx. Um, so let's, let's do an example of this. Let's say you had some function f of x equals 3 times x squared plus 1, the whole thing squared. Now, you could just sort of simplify this expression and then take the derivative. So that would be, what, 3 times x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1, and then 3x to the fourth plus 4x, um, don't know where I got that 4, sorry, 6 x squared plus 3. Okay, then you could take the derivative. The derivative of f with respect to x is 4 times 3 is 12, uh, and then that becomes a cube instead of 4, and then 6 times 2 is also 12, then that just becomes x, and the derivative of 3 is 0. Okay, another way of doing this is by saying, well, what if we wrote the function as 3 times u squared. And then u I wrote as x squared plus 1. Okay, well, I can take the derivative of f with respect to u. It would just be 3u squared, right? And you take that derivative, so 2 times 3 is 6. And then u squared would just be u. So that's the derivative of f with respect to u. Then I can also take the derivative of u with respect to x. So that would be 2x, and then the plus 1 just becomes nothing. Okay, so this is the derivative of f with respect to u and the derivative of u with respect to x. So now, I think about this equation right here. If I multiply the two, then what I'm going to get is df over dx. So if I wanted to find the derivative of f with respect to x, I could take 6u and multiply it by 2x. Now, I would immediately simplify that to 12x times u, and then I can plug in u, which is x squared plus 1. And if I wanted to simplify that, it would be 12x cubed plus 12x, which is exactly what we got before. Um, so again, what we're doing is we're taking these two derivatives, multiplying them together, and we're looking at the way the derivative is written as differentials. Those are called differentials. And basically, the du's cancel out to give you df over dx. Now, 
This might not seem like we've saved a lot of time by using this trick, uh, but let's say we had some function um, that was much larger. So let's call this one y. L let's call this one y. Let's say it was y equals x squared minus 2x to the fifth. I really, really don't want to factor all of that out and then take the derivative. Um, so instead what I could do is I could say, well, what if y equals u to the fifth and u is x squared minus 2x? Then I can take the derivative of y with respect to u, which is just 5u to the fourth, and the derivative of u with respect to x, which would be 2x minus 2. Now, if I want to find the derivative of y with respect to x, I just take the derivative of y with respect to u, multiply it by the derivative of u with respect to x. Those will cancel out and give me my answer. So 5u to the fourth times 2x minus 2. Um, and then I could do some simplifying if I wanted. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but at this point, more than likely what I would do is I would just say 5 and then plug in u, x squared minus 2x to the fourth times 2x minus 2. I could simplify that, um, but you know, for the AP test, they do not require you to simplify things. And if they had you have some crazy derivative like this, they would totally accept your answer written in a long form this way. So anyway, um, that's how you use the chain rule. Let's do the next equation on the equation sheet. Sine and cosine rules. Okay, so um, you, would, you would find that these rules are true if you took the formal derivatives um, of sine and cosine using the difference quotient and the limit as delta x approaches zero. This is something that if you have taken calculus, you've already done it. Um, and if you're gonna take calculus in the future, then you'll prove that it's true. But on the AP test, they just give you these equations and you can trust that they work. So the derivative with respect to x of, and the AP test will actually use a square bracket since it has so much here, of sine, and they'll write it kind of funny, ax is equal to a times cosine of ax. And the derivative with respect to x of cosine a times x, a is supposed to represent a constant, uh, is negative sine, sorry, negative a times sine of ax. Okay, so this is something you learn in calculus. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is actually oddly negative sine x. The way I always remember this is by thinking, you know, it's always easier to sin. So if I take the derivative of sine, that's the easy one. It's just cosine. Taking the derivative of cosine is harder because I have to remember that it's negative. Um, Anyway, you'll prove that this is true through the limiting process in a calculus class, but for us, we can just trust that it works. Uh, and this A thing, what this A thing is, is the chain rule applied. So let's maybe write it um, like we just did the chain rule. Okay, so how about Y is equal to sine of 3X. Okay, so what you would do is you would say Y is actually equal to sine of u, u is actually equal to 3x, then the derivative of y with respect to u, this is where we take use of our rule, is cosine, cosine of u, and the derivative of u with respect to x is 3. So now when I want to find the derivative dy dx, I multiply those two things together, um, which would be cosine of u times 3. Or I could take that 3 and put it in front and plug in u, which is 3x. So now I have my answer to my original function. So notice the a is the 3. That's what that is meant to show you. Okay, so let's do another example. The derivative of, oh sorry, let's say y equals um, 10 cosine of 4x 
Well, now I'm just going to go ahead and use the equation the way that they give it to me and trust that it works. I would say the derivative of y with respect to x is, okay, 10 times 4, so 40, and it's going to be negative sine, so negative 40 sine of 4x. That is how you take the derivative of cosine. Okay, let's move on to the next. Natural log rules. Okay, so natural logarithms, um, E and then, you know, LN is how you would normally see it written. Um, natural ro log rules come up a couple of times in very specific applications. Um, so let's just do some really, really basic examples. The rules that are written on your equation sheet are the derivative with respect to x of E times any constant A to the x. So this is just like the cosine and sine thing is equal to a times e to the a x. And the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of any function with some constant a times x is equal to 1 over x. The a disappears. That's it. So Again, you will learn why this is true in a calculus class, or maybe you already have, um, by using the difference quotient and the limiting process and a whole lot of algebra. Uh, but for our purposes, we just need to trust that these work. Um, so let's do an example. Let's say your equation f of x is, oh, I don't know, 2e to the 10x. The way that you would take the derivative of this df of dx is you would bring down the 10 to the front, multiply it by 2, so 20 e to the 10x. It just stays the same. For the natural log, um, let's say your function was ln of 300,000 times x, the derivative is 1 over x. <laughs> wow. Um, these, these take place in um, certain problems related to drag force, uh, and, and they're very small parts in much larger problems. The drag force problem, um, it's a real drag, and it is maybe the hardest thing that you can be asked to do on the AP Physics C uh, mechanics test. In the electricity and magnetism test, uh, it is also used quite, quite a bit often. But anyway, these are how you use the natural log tricks on the back of your equation sheet. So hopefully this helped you to see um, how to use the equations that are written on your equation sheet and given you a couple of quick examples of what it looks like uh, for some real practice. This video is over. You did great. Congratulations.